So the four components of post cardiac arrest, as I already said, post cardiac arrest brain injury, myocardial dysfunction, ischemic reperfusion systemic response, and persistent precipitating pathology, which was there pre arrest. Next. So the unique uh, features of this post cardiac arrest pathophysiology, they are often superimposed on the injury or the disease that caused the cardiac arrest, as well as the underlying comorbidities. So the therapies that focus on individual organs, it may compromise the other injured organs. So you have to look at the patient in totality, not as individual organ systems. The severity of these disorders after ROSC is not uniform, and it will vary in individual patients based on the severity of the ischemic result. Next. So this uh, table is quite important. As you can see, it uh, we have already charted it in the form of syndrome. The pathophysiology, its clinical man, uh, manifestations, and possible treatments. So first is the post cardiac arrest. Most important is brain injury. Why do we? Why does it occur? Because there is cerebrovascular auto re, uh, regulation impairment, hypoxic induced cerebral edema, and post ischemia neurodegeneration which can be manifested in the form of patient may have coma, he may have seizures, he may have myoclonic jerks, he may have a persistent vegetative state, he may have a spinal stroke, or he may land up in brain death. Now, what are the treatments, possible treatments? First is therapeutic hypothermia. Hemodynamic optimization as early as possible. Minimize further hypoxia in the form of airway protection and mechanical ventilation. If patient is having seizures, control the seizures. Uh, you have to control reoxygenation injury also. So you have to maintain the saturation uh, SAO2 levels between 94 to 96% and supportive care in the form of if there is alteration in hemodynamics, you may require vasopressor drugs or inotropes, or uh, if you have a kidney injury, anything like that, which can precipitate this brain injury, you have to treat that, support that. Second is post-cardiac arrest myocardial dysfunction, which happens because there is global hypokinesis, that is what is called myocardial stunning, or because of the acute cardiac syndrome, uh, which results in reduced cardiac output, leading to, so whenever there is decreased cardiac output, you will have low uh, hypotension, you can have dysarrhythmias or cardiovascular collapse. So what is the possible treatment? Early vascularization, if there is uh, acute myocardial injury, as I said, as in uh, brain injury also, hemodynamic optimization at the earliest, IV fluids, if required, inotropes, may require IABP, LVAD, or ECHO. Now, third is systemic ischemia reperfusion response. Why does this occur? Because there is impaired vasoregulation. So, it will result in adrenal suppression, resulting in impaired tissue oxygen delivery and utilization. So impaired resistance to infection. Along with that, it will cause increased coagulation. Clinical, uh, clinically, it can manifest in the form of fever, hyperglycemia, multi-organ failure, because impaired resistance to infection. So various infections can cause uh, cardiovascular collapse ongoing ischemia. So in every case, hemodynamic optimization at the earliest is must. IV fluids, vasopressors, high volume hemofiltration, temperature control, uh, glucose control, antibiotics if there is. Now coming to the precipitating pathology which caused this problem in the, the first place. 
it could be because of any cardiovascular disease which may have been present and just manifested now like acute myocardial infarction or acute cardiomyopathy or acute coronary syndrome there could be any pulmonary disease could be a cns disease thromboembolic disease toxicological um, uh, causes like overdose of some drug or some poisoning infection hypovolemia so specific to this cause you have to the patient may present so disease specific interventions um, guided by the patient's condition can be given next uh we'll skip this one so how do you treat post cardiac arrest syndrome we have seen that how do we deal with the post cardiac arrest uh, next what are the pathologies and how to treat it now as we have already discussed we now will discuss in detail uh, early hemodynamic optimization it, there is no evidence based guidelines but the suggestion is similar approach as early goal directed therapy for sepsis although map goals are undefined map is mean arterial pressure because there is loss of cerebral autoregulation uh plus cpp that is cerebral perfusion pressure is dependent on mean arterial pressure so if your icp is high you have to maintain your a map at a higher level so as to maintain the cerebral perfusion pressure although icp is generally not elevated next so map goals are usually kept at uh, more than uh, 65 and less than 90 mixed venous gases venous hyperoxia falsely elevated levels due to poor tissue extraction because you use epinephrine and there is mitochondrial fail failure so follow the urine output you have to maintain the urine output and you have to follow the lactates no one value of lactate is important it is just the trend which is important whether the your lactates are increasing or decreasing you have to go for that avoid hyperoxia uh, pa to po to goals should be between 92 to 96% aim for normal cardia not hypo or hyper one should volume resuscitate the patient and if even after volume resuscitation your map is not improving consider inotropes or vasopressors next please treatment of the acute cardiac uh, syndrome if it is indicated hypothermia in case of seizures treat them because seizures will increase the cerebral metabolism leading to increase oxygen demand uh there is no evidence of prophylactic use of anti seizure medication if there is uh there are myoclonic drugs you can uh, use clonazepam next please treat hyperglycemia there is no evidence for the role of neuroprotective medication so they should not be used adrenal dysfunction should be treated accordingly renal failure according to the uh Uh, indication rrt or uh, can be used infection although they are more prone for aspiration pneumonia but if there is infection leading on to sepsis with uh, organ failure you need to use broad spectrum antibiotics so uh this is uh, how post cardiac care algorithm now rosc has been obtained this is the initial stabilization uh, phase so you manage the airway that is by early placement of the endotracheal tube manage respiratory parameters by starting around 10 breaths per minute saturations to be maintained between 92 to 96% pacio2 in between 35 to 45 mm of mercury manage the hemodynamic parameters by maintaining a mean arterial pressure more than 65 and less than 90 obtain a 12 lead ecg consider the cardiac intervention if you have evidence of stemi unstable cardiogenic shock or mechanical circulatory support is required now after this uh you 
uh, reassess the patient multiple times and you see whether the patient is following commands or not. If he's following commands, then other critical care management can be used. If he's not, what do you use? You do the TTM, obtain a CT, easy monitoring and the critical care management. Then evaluate, treat for the reversible causes and continue your management. Next, please. Now, after this, the question comes, we are saying that we should avoid hyperpyrexia. So should we cool this patient? So in, if we are to cool the patient, are there, um, or should we cool all the patients or there should be a selective subset of patients whom we should cool? What will be the parameters? What are the complications? Because hypothermia comes with a lot of complications. What if the original documented rhythm was PEA, that is pulseless electrical activity. We saw that in this patient, it was VF. So that is why we are thinking of cooling this patient. But what, it, what if it was pulseless electrical activity? Do we cool it? So we'll find the answers at the next slides. Next. So who should be cooled? Patients who have out of hospital VF or PVT arrest. Okay. Or patients who have in hospital VF arrest. They have the maximum benefit and favorable survival out of hospital, all rhythms, all patients who have non-VF, they can have some possible benefit, not necessarily, or in patients who have pyrexia within 72 hours because pyrexia itself is associated with poor outcome. So any patient, whether he had initial rhythm of VAF or PA, is having pyrexia within 40 to 72 hours, you have to cool that patient. Next, please. Uh, these are the uh, studies which showed patients who had hypothermia or normothermia, whether they should be treated as hypo or normothermia. Next, please. So, uh, as you can see, patients who had uh, hypothermia had a better survival rate rather than patients who had hypothermia. Next, please. So what are the parameters? Now, tar uh, target core temperature should be kept at 32 to 34 degrees centigrade. Onset is variable. Duration for 12 to 4, 24 hours. Now, further data is still required. Next, please. Now, what are the complications of therapeutic hypothermia? Technically, there is shivering, plus you have to use sedation and muscular blockers to prevent shivering. So there are a lot of temperature fluctuations. Hemodynamically, there will be increased in the SVR, decreased in the cardiac output, and the patient will be more susceptible to arrhythmias, especially ready arrhythmias. Plus, it induces hypovolemia in because of the diuresis, leading to electrolyte abnormalities, leading to increased probability of arrhythmias. Next. Uh, impaired glucose tolerance, because there is decreased insulin levels and sensitivity. Increased risk of coagulopathy, so increased risk of bleeding. Plus, hypothermia also decreases the immunity, so increased susceptibility to infections. So, patients who had th therapeutic hypothermia were more susceptible to pneumonias rather than patients who had normal temperatures. Next. So, should we cool, uh, coming back to the question, should we have, uh, should we cool this patient who had suffered a VF? Yes, we should, because all ventricular fibrillation patients, even in hospital or out of hospital arrest, should be treated with hypothermia. Next. Now, coming to the next question. 
you have already resuscitated him you have saved him he has achieved his return of spontaneous circulation you have already cooled him now his wife arrives with three kids they want to know what the prognosis is so what do you tell them and how do you prognosticate the patients post arrest uh, next please so uh, what are the important things when you uh, have to prognosticate a patient for uh, a family for the patients neurological recovery so for that you need to know timing what is a poor outcome prognostication which can be in the form of clinical eeg biomarkers and image next timing first 24 hours are very difficult you can never tell how whether the patient is going to come out or remain in what is the prognostication you cannot just tell them in first 24 hours because that is the time when you are actively resuscitating and trying to correct as much hemodynamics as you can so much evidence is derived on testing at 72 hours so you should never prognosticate a patient's family before 72 hours now therapeutic hypothermia changes this timeline next please so what is a poor outcome when do you say that the patient is going to have poor outcome so this is our glasgow coma uh, scoring system uh score 1 is dead 2 is vegetative state where he is awake but not aware he does not interact in any cognitive way with the environment but his vegetative functions are preserved score 3 is when there is severe disability but he is able to follow commands but cannot live independently he will require support for daily living activities score 4 is moderate uh, disability where he will be able to participate in daily living activities but his work and social life will be compromised five score five is when there is good recovery and there is a high chance that he will be able to return to work or school